The FTX collapse brought Bitcoin all the way down to $15,000. But what if I told you that the pain is not over yet? Because there are six existential risks remaining. And if even one of them were to happen, Bitcoin would crash to 5K or even 3K. No joke, I think you'll agree with me once you hear the details. So let's dive into each one and analyze what people are worried about and how likely they are to happen. Starting with the famous one, Tether. People are once again worried that Tether Tether could collapse. I know, I know, Tether FUD is getting real old these days. But this is not the same FUD as before, because on December 1st, the Wall Street Journal put out a bombshell report saying that Tether had given out over $6 billion worth of loans in their own stablecoin. This set off alarm bells for many people, because it reminded us of the reckless loans that FTX gave out in their own token. I mean, if Tether would just take in USD and give out USDT, then there'd be no issue. But by giving out these loans, there's a chance that they go bad and make USDT under collateralized. To make matters worse, Tether refuses to share who's on the other side of those loans and what collateral is behind them. So this whole thing is quite opaque and that makes people worried that a bank run or death spiral could happen. I mean, if that were to happen, it would be catastrophic for all of crypto. Because Tether is still the largest stablecoin after all, with close to 50% market share, and is widely used by exchanges like Binance, as well as crypto companies, funds, and investors like you and I. So we would all be wrecked if USDT went the way of Luna's UST. But is that likely to happen though? Well, not in my opinion, and here's why. So Tether has actually been super resilient since the beginning. In 2019, news came out that USDT was only 74% backed by its reserves, and people were screaming that a bank run would happen. But that never came, and Tether survived. Also, in terms of these risky loans, Tether says that they're over-collateralized by highly liquid assets and that they are not doing any fractional reserve banking type stuff over there. So yeah, I actually tend to believe them because I think they've built up a positive track record over recent years. Remember all the FUD in early 2022 about Tether holding risky commercial paper? Well, they promised to wind that down over time and that's exactly what they did. So with these risky loans that everyone's tripping about, they also promised to wind those down, and that's why I'm calling it now that Tether will be just fine. But on the other hand, this next risk, I'm much more worried about. It's about Ripple's ongoing legal battle against the SEC. The SEC sued them back in December 2020, and they've been in a long court battle ever since. It's finally nearing its conclusion though, because both sides filed for summary judgment, and it's estimated that the case should wrap up by early to mid 2023. At the core of the case is the Howey test, and it's used to determine if an asset is a security or not a security. This verdict will answer some existential questions, such as what exactly is an investment contract anyways? The judge could rule anywhere from all out Ripple win to all out SEC win or something in between. But if the verdict is on the SEC side of things, then it could spell trouble for almost every crypto project out there. It would mean that every token would be an unregistered security and hence cannot be traded in the US. And it would mean that all centralized exchanges offering these tokens are also non-compliant. Can you imagine? Most exchanges, projects, and even everyday investors would be wrecked. But what's the likelihood of such a ruling? Well, I read a bunch of analyses from some top crypto lawyers, and the general consensus is that the verdict is going to be somewhere in the middle or an all-out SEC win. By the way, before you tell me that some Joe Schmo lawyer said that Ripple will win, please go check out the credentials and tell me why they're qualified to speak on securities laws, one of the biggest brain legal disciplines out there. I'm not gonna name any names, but I've seen a lot of no-name lawyers try to build a following by playing to the emotions of the XRP army, and frankly, it's disgusting. Anyways, here's a great quote from a crypto lawyer I respect. Quote, just read the SEC's reply brief to Ripple. Savage. The way Ripple claims investment contracts work is probably how they should and are originally meant to work. But Howie is a son of a bee. He continues, I'd love for Ripple to win. I just find it quite unlikely it will. Judges seem to view Howie Test's purpose to be preventing loopholes for selling investment thingies outside of the security laws. You see, he's even rooting for Ripple, but if you force him to predict a verdict, he would say that it's going against Ripple. Anyways, I'm not gonna rehash all of this out right now, but I encourage you to go read that thread for yourself. And as for what we can do about this, unfortunately, not much we can do besides hope and pray that the verdict ends up more on the nuanced side. Now, this next risk is quite similar to Ripple's, but with even bigger potential for catastrophe. 
And that's the risk that Ether gets deemed a security too. I mean, a lot of big name politicians and regulators have said before that ETH is a commodity and not a security. But with its recent move to proof of stake, some of them have started to change their minds. They say that staking looks a lot like lending and that validators could be pooling their ETH in a common enterprise. Now that's definitely debatable, but all I know is that if they really do deem ETH a security, then it'd be nuclear Armageddon for all of crypto because that means pretty much everything is a security besides Bitcoin and stable coins. US exchanges would have to delist everything besides Bitcoin pretty much. And that would instantly kneecap the US market, which like it or not, is still a massive source of liquidity for the space. So yeah, ETH as a security would be no bueno. But is that likely to happen though? Well, I also don't think so because regulators and politicians have clearly not made up their mind about ETH yet. Like in the CFTC lawsuit against SBF, they reiterated that ETH was a commodity. And in the Gillibrand Lummis bill, they categorized ETH as a commodity too. Also, a bunch of crypto lawyers have said that we should all chill out about this ETH being a security concern. Because even if regulators try to treat ETH as a security, it be unlikely to pass a court challenge. Like first of all, if you run a validator, you're actually doing work yourself instead of relying on a third party. And also, there's no central issuer of ETH currently. So yeah, I'm not too worried about this, but we definitely need to put pressure on our representatives to make sure they get this ETH designation right. Now, this next risk is like a web of dominoes, so complex that it's gonna make your head spin. But I'll try my best to explain it simply. So the main worry here is that the 600,000 BTC in the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust will be dumped on the markets, and that would bring us back to the Stone Ages. I mean, if that were to happen, $5,000 BTC would be frankly optimistic. But the issue here isn't even with GBTC or the trust itself. It's actually with the parent company, Digital Currency Group. So DCG is like a holding company that owns a bunch of big names in crypto, such as Grayscale, Coindesk, and Foundry. But the important subsidiary here is Genesis, which helps institutional investors get into crypto. Now, part of Genesis is an entity called Genesis Capital, which does lending and borrowing for institutions. And as of right now, they have a massive hole in their balance sheet. They had given out billions in unsecured or rehypothecated loans to the now bankrupt hedge fund, Three Arrows Capital. They also had hundreds of millions of dollars in FTX, which they're unable to withdraw. So a few weeks ago, they were trying to raise emergency funding to patch up that hole, but they were unsuccessful. So they had to close withdrawals and now they're on the edge of bankruptcy. But what does this have to do with the 600K BTC and the Grayscale Trust? Well, that comes back to the parent company, DCG. They of course tried to save Genesis. So they assumed a massive $1.2 billion liability on behalf of Genesis. They also took out a $575 million loan from Genesis that they still owe. So DCG owes Genesis a lot of money and all signs point to them being unable to pay. That's why a lot of people were speculating that they may have to unwind the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust in order to pay off their debts and avoid bankruptcy. But is that catastrophic scenario likely to play out? Well, I doubt it. Because first of all, GBTC cannot be unilaterally dissolved or unwound. It had to be approved by the other trustees. And DCG only holds like 10% of GPTC shares, so they're not even close to a majority. Also, just for the sake of argument, let's say that they could unilaterally decide to dissolve GPTC. Even then, I don't think they'd want to, because the Grayscale Trust generates hundreds of millions in revenue per year due to their 2% annual fee. So there's a huge incentive to keep that cash cow running. So it's much more likely that they sell the trust to some other company, which will continue milking that fee. Either way, my takeaway is that there's no real threat for the 600k BTC to get dumped on us, but we should still keep a close eye on this because if DCG goes bankrupt, that could cause more contagion to spread across the space. Now, this next risk is from a company I bet you haven't heard of. It's called Silvergate, and they're one of the few US banks that actually serves crypto companies. So that's why a lot of massive exchanges use them to hold customer deposits. Remember, the banking industry has long been hesitant to touch anything related to crypto. So having one like Silvergate, which embraces the industry, is rare and valuable. But that's not all, because Silvergate is also an innovator. They created the Silvergate Exchange Network, or SEN, that connects all their clients together and lets them exchange and convert funds on a 24-7 basis. So they are incredibly important for the crypto industry. And without them, centralized companies would be cut off from their fiat on-ramps and would be unable to operate. 
Anyways, the worry here is that Silvergate may be screwed because of what went down with FTX. And there's actually two angles to explore here. First is their potential knowledge of FTX and Alameda's fraud. Silvergate actually got a letter from some US senators inquiring about their knowledge or potential involvement in the FTX debacle. If it turns out that Silvergate helped perpetuate the fraud and they didn't do anything about it, then they could be in huge legal trouble. They could lose their freaking bank charter if it turns out that they violated the Bank Secrecy Act by not doing proper due diligence and reporting suspicious transactions, such as the ones between FTX and Alameda. Now, the CEO of Silvergate has said that they are also the victim in this whole FTX ordeal, but did you know that his son-in-law used to run their risk department? I mean, what in the world is going on here? There's such nepotism and such a clown show. Anyways, that's just the first angle. And the second angle is that Silvergate's financials could have been hurt by the FTX collapse. Now, I don't wanna bore you with too many details here, but based on the numbers I've seen, it actually looks like they'll be okay here. Because Silvergate has super safe leverage ratios, they have a ton of financial cushion, and they're essentially running a plain vanilla commercial bank with their customers' deposits. They aren't doing any fancy risky stuff like what Tether is accused of. So on the financial side, I'm not worried at all. But on the regulatory side, I actually am worried. I mean, I would love to give them the benefit of the doubt, but trust is running on low supply these days, and the Senate investigation could uncover some shady activity which could cause them to lose their license. So yeah, I think we'll find out real soon, like before mid-2023, if Silvergate was in the right or wrong here, but you better pray that they were on the up and up, or else the whole crypto space will be wrecked if Silvergate goes down. Now last, but arguably the biggest risk of them all, is that Binance turns out to be another FTX. I mean, can you imagine? If Binance collapses, we'd be back to the Stone Ages. Now, based on the details I've seen, I think most of the concerns are overblown and Binance will be okay. But recently, I've heard some rumors that SBF may rat out CZ and Binance in order to shorten his jail time. And if that's true, and regulators decide to squeeze Binance based on Sam's info, then it could turn out to be much worse for Binance than I initially expected. Either way, if you want a deeper dive into all things Binance, their fake audit, their commingling of funds, and their manipulation of BNB's price, then you want to watch this video right here.